Okay, gents. Uh, look, thanks very much for tuning in. So we've had uh, some mixed success. I mean, we had a really good kids, kids session. So I think it's going to work with kids. Uh, adult um, Hapkido was what was light on, and I had a guest speaker. I actually had Ray Floro. So we like, and I'm thinking I'm going to get guests to pop in for 10, 15 minutes. And tonight, uh, obviously, this we've already got uh, a number of. I can't even. I haven't got my glasses on, but it looks like a few people, which is great. Um, Mike's going to do some terrific stuff. Tim Tan's got a, a lesson plan. If we need to do any partner stuff, I'm here with Harry. The other thing is I was thinking, and I've sent an email to John Danaher. Uh, I think I get some guests to speak for different, on different things. Just we ask some questions or whatever. Why not? And, you know, obviously there'll be a payment or something. I don't mind that. Uh, and the other thing, guys, is the collection company. It's really interesting because they're applying the ACCC ruling. And the ACCC ruling is if you're not getting anything, then you can't collect fees. I'm, yeah, I totally agree. If you're not getting value, then we don't collect fees. At the moment, I've said, well, it's reduced, so we reduce it. And they gave us two options. I've chosen option B, which is to continue. But if people say to me, Trav, you tried your best, it's not working. I think it'll work in the kids. I think this will work too in, in the actual BJJ. Then, uh, then, we, then we do clothes, unfortunately. Or we run it from home and we still do some stuff or something. But uh, I don't see this as lasting seven weeks. I think it'll last a bit longer. And uh, it's very interesting times, but we need to enjoy ourselves. And tonight, Mike's done some preparation and I'm looking forward to, the, to this as much as anyone else. So over to you, Mike. Thanks, Trav. Right, I'm just gonna share a screen so you can, there we go. Are you sharing your phone? Right. I'm gonna mute. Would have that up on your screen at the moment. So tonight I'm gonna, uh, I'm looking at a fight. I've got Marcelo Garcia versus Jake Shields. It's a match from a couple of years ago. And what I like about this is that it's a quintessential um, Marcelo Garcia match. And so he's renowned for his, his guard work, his um, butterfly guard, his arm drags and his single legs. And what you get to do is you, you get to see all of that um, in this, this competition. So you get to see him um, contesting this guard environment, looking for a, 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 a he, he gives up top of it, top position to begin with and then how he uses that sort of so that, that bottom position to be able to work his way into a top position to be able to reserve reverse the situation and then he ends up um able to pass um jake shield's guard so i'm gonna we'll get it going and then we can um we can i'll talk it through at the moment so a couple of years ago they're a little bit older than this now okay so what I want you to notice is that Marcelo moves from he, he, where he wants to get to is his hooks. He wants a seated butterfly guard. That's what he wants. And any time he doesn't have that, though, he automatically reverses to his closed guard. And then if he can't get to closed guard, then he looks at um, deep half and, and X guard. They're like his, his fail safe. He will always, so he's, so he's got this plan of attack where he wants to be his seated butterfly. But then when he can't get that, he will immediately like, no, nah, I don't like this position. He'll reverse that to a, um, a full closed guard and then immediately work to gain space to be able to get back to his hooks. So I want you to observe that first up. Right here. So a pretty simple sort of clinch work here. Marcelo's a guard puller. So he's not necessarily worried about like Jake taking him down or anything like that. They're both quite defensive. If you have a look at where their weight's positioned, Jake's definitely not giving up an arm drag. There we go. We've got Marcelo pulling guard and immediately looking to get gain space for his hips. So that way he can get to a, um, a, a hooks guard position. What he did though, was that Jake was able to switch his hips over to the right hand side. And you can see that Jake's right leg has passed um, Marcelo's left knee. And so hooks guard is gone. He's blown away. So this is an example of, right, he would normally go to butterfly, can't get to butterfly, he'd go to close. He didn't get closed, it's too late now. So he's going to go towards deep half and threaten that. 
There he is, he's looking, comes inside, sets some frame, come underneath, and Jake's like, I don't want anything to do with that because Marcelo's got a really good back take from there. All right, so we saw him immediately put his hooks back in again, and then Jake changed his upper body. He lowered himself down to try to control Marcelo's hips. Have a look at where Jake's hands are. His elbow's low at the hip, his hands are low at the waist, and he's trying to get his weight low so that way he can pin Marcelo's hips to the ground. Anytime Marcelo's feeling threatened, he's gonna go to the closed guard. Now watch what he's constantly building his frames back in though. So his hands are gonna to go to Jake's neck. You'll see this, he does this Y sort of grip on, on, on Jake's neck, which looks decidedly unpleasant, pushes that up and never lets Jake settle in this position. There it is, hands coming up. He's gonna push him away, hip escape, Hands, feet go to the hips, sit up, butterfly. That's exactly what he wants. And we're going to see him do that a couple of times now. As Jake goes for his pass, Marcelo is super relaxed because he can always drop back, put his back on the ground and recover. There's a single leg attempt. So what you'll see is any time that Jake hesitates and steps backwards, Marcelo will follow. And that's where he picks up the single leg. He doesn't go to a single leg from a clinch or a standing position. He goes for a single leg from a seated position and comes forward. Misses this one. This fight here is all about Marcelo's right knee. If he can keep that hook in, then Jake is not going to get the guillotine. And he doesn't. There's, a, there's an X guard and then a recovery. Shoulder crush there. So this is a way of gain. Marcelo's slowing Jake down. He doesn't want Jake to be looking for the pass. His arms have come forward. Doesn't want the control. So threatens the, um, the, the shoulder crush. And Jake's just going to withdraw that arm. That allows Marcelo to reset. He's in his closed guard. He's going to frame on that neck again. He's going to look for space. The feet are going to go to the hips. And he's going to go back to butterfly. There it is. Got the space. Seated butterfly. He's not threatening anything from that closed guard. He's just using closed guard as his fail safe. There it goes. Jake was able to threaten. Goes to closed guard. Gets the space. Hooks are going to come back in again. So you see how Marcelo's always controlling that distance. He never lets Jake prevent him from being able to gain space. There's the frame. Close guard. He's going to set the hand positions again. Fight for space. So Marcelo's hips at no stage are prevented from gaining space. Single leg. Beautiful. Here we go. Now... This is really important because um, Marcelo is faced with the same problem. Jake is looking for those hooks and he's looking to threaten exactly the same thing that Marcelo had been doing. But what you see is a completely different response. Mar Marcelo always posting on there, always getting space, always trying to push so he's got a seated butterfly guard. Jake, on the other hand, is quite happy to lay flat. Now look at Marcelo's elbows. They are in super tight. There is no chance of a Kimura. There's no chance of a shoulder crush. He's giving no space. Marcelo's head's up the center line, so Jake can't sit up. He can't extend his hips away. Marcelo's knees are nice and close. He's going to keep this extraordinarily tight, but what he's doing is shutting down Jake's ability to be able to gain space. Here we go. Let's have a look at it. Oh, the ref's going to reset here. So... That's a half attempt at a bit of a frame there. He's on the right path of setting a frame, but Marcelo keeps that head on the center line. Doesn't let it go. Now, if you can shut someone's hips down when you're in this top position, then you can start threatening a, throat, a floating pass. And there we go. Marcelo just floats past and he ends up in a half guard. So he's already defeated Jake's butterfly hooks because he's killed them. They're on the ground. His hips is flat. There's no space. Now look at Marcelo's right elbow here. That is in tight, so there's no room for Jake to threaten a Kimura. Marcelo's head's up the center line on Jake's chin. So that means it's very difficult for Jake to bring his right hand across to threaten that Kimura. So he's preventing the Kimura attempt. He's in half guard. So his main goal now is to get his left, Marcelo's main goal now is to get his left leg light and mobile again. All right, let's have a look at how he does that. So switches base. 
Now look at that, grabs that foot immediately. What that's doing is preventing Jake from being able to use that leg to, leave, to get leverage. The harder he lifts that leg, the more weight that rolls towards Jake's shoulders and his hips. Now you see where Marcelo's knee th there is though. It's trapped. What he's going to do here, he's gonna use this position and what he's doing is trying to gain some space for his leg. And have a look at how high Jake's neck is off the ground. He's letting Jake roll all the way over. But before he gets too far, he's always got the cross face there. Not too far. Bring him back. Control it. The whole time Marcelo's getting his knee, his foot closer and closer to Jake's butt and his knee higher and higher. The higher he can get that knee, he suddenly gets into a position where he can be mobile from that because his knee's free in the half gut. It only the ankle's trapped. There we go. He's keep using the cross face to get him fat. And when the head's high, there we go. Head's so high, Jake's committed, the knee's close, and now Marcelo can come through using the guillotine as the control to get out of the half guard. Beautiful. Jake lets go of the half guard in order to try to escape because the guillotine's so tight, and that's on. That's a fantastic finish. All right. I'm just going to rewind for a moment so you can see that finish again. That's a great finish. So have a look at his hip. His hip's high off the ground. He's letting Jake have all sorts of mobility. But what that actually gives is get, exposes Jake's neck. Now he's using that top control rather than going for an underhook or a head arm or a Kimura grip. He's using that guillotine as his control. His feet come in, pro up in the half guard. And he's got so much control over that neck, he can use that neck to just roll Jake straight back onto his back and move into mount. I think that's a, a brilliant finish. All right. So the key things that I really enjoyed out of this was you saw, you saw Jake Shields faced with the same problem as Marcelo Garcia. But Marcelo Garcia, he understood what, what, how to defeat his own game. So he kept his head on the center line. He controlled those hips. He kept that space really tight. The elbows were hidden from the Kimura threat. And he just glided past um, Jake's hooks straight into half guard. And then once he was in half guard, it was all about get, getting the grips he needed. So he gave Jake enough rope and he was using that foot and using his weight on the far shoulder in order to control and the cross face to keep Jake from turning up, but allow him to come up a bit that exposed Jake's neck, and then the guillotine was on. I think this was um, this was his game game plan from the very beginning. There was no accident there in anything that he did. He was doing a few things, but he was doing them very, very well, and he kept executing that same game plan over and over. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm just going to get back to the main screen. Hey, Mike, that was excellent and a great debrief. And you really pointed out uh, some, some aspects to look at. Like, you know, when you say, that's a very good way to do it. Uh, so I could follow exactly what you're doing. Are you saying that uh, Jake has a similar game to myself? Are you saying that? I, you... What I saw of his guard game there, it looked like Jake was comfortable sitting back in those, the, the hooks. But yeah. the difference was, was, he just laid back. He let Marcelo control that posture position. He was flat. And Marcelo yeah. never lets you flatten him when he's got hooks. He goes to close guard. He gets space. He's like, like he, because he, he knows that a flat pair of hooks are, are tantamount to a pass. You, they may as well not be there because all the, the, the mechanical leverage, the advantages of that leverage disappear as soon as you're laying down. So you've got to come up. You've got to play those hooks game from a seated position where you can come up. Um, he, I mean, his, his hooks game was very narrow. He was looking for the single leg. And that was really about it. He also looks for an arm drag from there. But I didn't see, I didn't see him go for that at all. Um, but you can see some examples of him doing that, uh, like Rico Rodriguez in the heavyweight, in, in the absolute, where he beat him in the absolute. He was using that as an arm drag. But that's because when you look at the weight difference, Rico it was 300 pound and Marcelo is 160 pound. And so doing a single leg on a 300 pound guy, you're going to get, you're going to, you're going to end up crushed under that. So the arm drag made perfect sense for that big body, but 
I have seen him do that arm drag on a few other people. Um, mm -hmm. What I need to do is I need to go back and do some more Jake Shields fights to have a look at the, if there are any better examples of his hooks guard to, to figure out what he was actually trying for there because it, it, it didn't look like he was threatening anything. Well, maybe he was outmaneuvered. You know, Garcia maybe just closed it down to the point that he was like, oh, flat, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. No, I think this, like when you, when you see someone who's at the top of their game, because this really was when Marcelo was at the top of his game. Only 24 too. Yeah. And exceptionally, and exceptionally creative, very, very good at what he was doing. And people just didn't know how to do it. So he may, I think in that fight, he made Jake look like an amateur. And Jake's not an amateur. Jake's a phenomenal competitor. Very, very good. But in that fight, he made him look like an amateur. But Marcelo does that to most competitors. He makes them... Because they, they never get to execute their game plan. It's always Marcelo's game plan. Yeah. He's, he's always absolutely furious about making sure that he's executing what he needs to be executing. It's not about countering your game. You're so busy trying to counter his game, you never get to play your game. And I think that's, from a competitive standpoint, that's excellent. Yeah, and look, the weight is so small in weight, and yet he made it look, he was handling them very easily, right? Yeah, yeah. If you are interested, like there's, um, if, you, uh, if you want to see more Marcelo Garcia, there's so much of it on YouTube. You can... Oh, no, if, as, if other people want to chat, please yeah. chat. I'm just talking, like. Yeah, but there, there's plenty of Marcelo Garcia out there and he is always worth watching. Uh, I was toying between him or bringing in a Hodger Gracie one because I just, wow. again, as a competitor, I just love watching Hodger Gracie. Um, there's lots of others out there, but um, from a from a, a technical, st like Keenan Cornelius is really interesting, but he, it's, a, it's a very sophisticated, subtle complicated jiu-jitsu style which i don't think is necessarily friendly to to white belts and me commentating it because i'm getting all excited by little little things but everyone else is looking at me going what are you excited well, i like about? why you pointed out those little things that we could go oh you're right yeah. the other thing is the uh, flexibility and the movement of that guy it was phenomenal he had his knees up around his head in deep like that's that's pretty hard to do but he was just doing yeah. it easy, wasn't he? Like, I was yeah. just like, yeah. yeah, he's not fighting his own body at any stage there. But he also wasn't, he wasn't moving himself into positions that he didn't have a back step to. Like, he, could, he always had somewhere where he could go to safely. Mm. Whereas you, so you don't see him invert very often because inversion is almost like that's the end state. There is like, where do you go after? In, your, your inversion either works or it doesn't. Whereas he's like, well, my clothes guard doesn't work. All right, well, I go to, I go to deep half. My deep half didn't work. All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab an X guard, and that's my, that's, that's, I'm going out the back door. And then once you've, once you're out the back door, like, he's on your back. And so people just, you, you saw Jake just ran away from that. He's like, I, I don't want anything to do with this because you were so close to being on my back from there. Yeah, so I hope that was that was valuable, or at least yeah. interesting to people to have a look at. But from a, a guard, a, like a hooks guard standpoint, there's probably no one better um, at doing at doing hooks guard than Marcelo Garcia. Interesting. Nice. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Tristan Yeah. Um, he's not on. Yeah. Most of this stuff I've talked to Tristan about in the past and you'll see that like you'll see everything that Marcelo did to pass that's exactly how I teach passing hooks double team floating techniques switch base half like all that sort of stuff I don't use that guillotine because I'm too tall I run out of body like so if I was to do that guillotine on on Tristan I'm 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 too high up on his body. I, I go too far north, so I can't get a good grip. So that's why I use things like a, a dragon's tire or a Kimura grip or a head arm or um, something else, because they give me they get, they allow my six foot three frame to have a little bit more room. But that's the advantage that Marcelo has is that at uh, was he about five foot six that he can he could fit on a much taller torso and be and be guillotining them whilst he's in half guard. I think that's that's fantastic. Mm. Yep. There's something to be said for being small. 
Yeah, I I would much rather a tall, heavy guy than a short person. Absolutely. Yeah. So, rolling with you and Tim Tam any day. Rolling with with oh, the short. <laughs> Cash talking now. Yeah. No, but right. no, but seriously. Yeah. Look, Mike, that was terrific. I thought it was good. It was really good. It was really good, mate. Um, I hope we can do a bit more of this. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to yeah. Richie. He's got something planned and. I think if you've got some mats, you'll be able to, to do a bit. Yeah. Um, do, we, do we need to do anything technically or do we want to stick on? Oh, yeah, no, I'll put it back on the table and point it down at you. All right. We'll just get jigged up here. So you go back over there. Yeah. I'll, um, do I hand? All right, Mike, have you, you've handed back control to me. How do I, how do I see, I don't know, how do I see me? How do we see, uh, not that one. Mm. You're all in frame there, you and Tim Tam. Yeah, so I, I think you're good. He's good, isn't he? Yep. Right. Yeah, he's in he's in frame there. All right, good. All right, mate. Take yeah. Thanks, Mike. No worries. Hey, um, so the, whoever for everyone that sort of listens to Mike break down that match, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have believed it was a fantastic way to do online learning. To be honest with you. I think um, that's the way we do it. But I think it's a really, really uh, a strong sustain, Mike, if you can if you can keep finding matches and doing that. We do too. Um, I think it's a really good way to do it. I've got a lot out of it, mate, so thank you very much for putting that together. Um, so look, we, we won't spend too long on uh, what we're going to do next, uh, but the, the concept that we spoke about with Trav and Tristan and Mike is uh, how do you do BJJ online? And this is, this is a question that everyone around the world is asking themselves. Can you even do BJJ online without a training partner? Um, and to be honest with you, I don't know if anyone has the answer because no one, you know, probably no one has even tried it before, but I think we're going to be forced to give this a crack and, and uh, see what we can do. But certainly my mindset with what we want to do is that we're, we're not trying to improve our BJJ. We're not trying to come back to the match better than we were because that's, that's not reality. You know, the old karate kid is you can't learn karate from a book. Um, but what we don't want to do is go back from, to start. You know, we don't want to come back whenever this thing's over, hit the mats again, and then all be brand new white belts starting from scratch again. So this concept of maintaining BJJ, uh, maintaining the mental and maintaining the physical, and then when we hit the mats again, that's when we combine the two again. Um, I think that's what we should be aiming for. And I think Nick showed an, an amazing example of how you can maintain the mental visualization. Uh, and I'm gonna go through now stuff for how you can maintain the physical. Uh, now, you're missing the combination of those two, uh, but you know, you're getting two out of the three, which is a really good way to go forward. So that's the concept that we're going to go forward with. Uh, we, we spent a lot of time on the first part, so this won't go for long. This will go for about 20 minutes. Um, and it's just going to be very, very sort of basic. And the whole concept of the stuff that we're going to be doing by ourselves is uh, movement before moves. Uh, it's all about the fundamentals and the foundations of how to move your body uh, before you learn to do your flying triangles, your, your crazy arm drags and all that sort of stuff. Ironically, those are the, the things that attract us to jiu-jitsu, those cool submissions, those cool moves, those things that link each other on Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, those things we can't really do now. So it's going to be focused on the, the pure, basic, uh, fundamentals and foundational movements uh, to, to work on and, and stuff you can do. Now, a couple of concepts before we start. Um, I, I want this to be completely partner-free because I think that's the reality of where we are. We need to be able to do this training in our living room without mats. And when we start doing these lessons more often, I'll certainly be running them from my living room and then I'm sure Tristan and everyone else will be doing the same as well. Um, we will look into making some training aids. I've already watched a couple of videos of guys making some pretty cool aids, uh, stuffing a couple of pillows into a gear, tying it up, just using that for assistance. We'll talk about that later. Um, and the thing is, you know, you can't let your body atrophy. Uh, there's been a couple of workout videos that I've put up as well, and, and the, the whole concept is you do them in your time, when you want, in your living room. You don't need a gym, you don't need equipment, you just need the mindset and the commitment to do it. Same with these lessons. So that's really, that's pretty much it uh, for what we're going to do. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to do a real quick warm-up. Uh, we're going to do a couple of just hip movements, talk about the real basic sort of hips. The concept of today's lesson is going to be uh, you're on your back, your partner's on, uh, on top of you, how do you escape it? We'll talk about what parts of your body need to be working to engage to get out of that, how you can better that, and some drills to practice that in your own time. We're going to do about sort of 20 minutes all up, and we'll call it quits for tonight. Okay, so we'll start off with the, uh, Travis just armbarring uh, his gate. 
Um, we'll start off with some uh, arm circles just to do some warm ups first. So just rotating those arms forward, nice big circles. Uh, your shoulders, you know, the shoulders of BJJ get used a whole bunch. Now, if you don't start using them weekly as you have, uh, chronically, you know, as you have, they're going to start to get weak and you're going to get an injury. So doing some big ones forward, stopping there, and then rotating those backwards now. Full range of motion, doing the whole side of the clock, really getting those shoulders working. We're not going to get too much of a sweat up, and we just want to make sure the body is still moving. So moving those arms backwards. Okay, cool. Starting out the front, old favorite, one arm either way. Five of those, back to the center, and then one arm either way again. Okay, cool. Let's just do some air push-ups at the front. Do 10 of those all the way back, all the way forward, making sure the muscles are working all the way back, all the way forward. Okay, it's not about speed, it's about full range of motion. Okay, great. Your shoulders should start getting a bit warm now, might have certainly warm, and then up at a 45 degree angle for 10 times as well. All the way down, getting those back muscles into it, and then all the way up again, warming up those shoulders. Good, that's a good little warm-up routine if you're gonna work out. Now let's go down and let's just do 10 slow controlled push-ups. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, good job. I should have said eight. Pretty tight. All right. So we'll stand up now. Just do, doing some hip movements. So it's going to be all about the hips today. So we just want to make sure we're nice and loose throughout the hips. Big circles with those hips. Just... This is like a Jane Fonda workout video. Hey, Harry, can you get the screen Other way? so we can see what's going on? We, yeah, we can only see a little screen. All right, perfect. And then feet together, knees together. Let's just warm up those knees a little bit. Rotating anti-clockwise 10 times. Pause clockwise 10 times. Okay, cool. Shake it out, foot up, work on the ankle, rotating the ankle, full range of motion, some hooligans in front of the camera. Other foot. Okay. okay. Don't worry. So shake it out. Uh, that's going to be our warm up for today. All right. So what we're going to speak about, and I was just sort of walk, sort of writing yeah, down. Yeah, just down a bit, Harry. Down a bit? Yep. Okay. There's good. Okay, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Harry. So, uh, what we're going to do today is just a really, really basic hip movement. And I think, you know, it warrants that we have time, we have attention, we have commitment to, to really break down how does this movement come about um, and why is it important to maintain. And the hip movement is very, very simple. Um, and it's the hip movement that you do when you are on your back and your opponent is sitting over the top of you. So, from the side angle. The hip movement is the hip bump, in essence. And it's one of those first fundamental movements that you kind of learn that if you've never done BJJ before, it, it's a sort of strange concept using a hip as a weapon. Um, but, you know, th this is the first time you kind of learn it. So we all know that to get the hip bump, we want to make maximum movement with the hips itself. So the way we do that is we bring those feet as close to the bottom as we can. You're really trying to push the weight onto the heels. You know, if you're more flexible, you can get those feet as close as you can. But... The, the less distance you have between your foot and your bottom, the higher your hips are going to go. The next part of the movement is obviously pushing up onto those uh, feet and going up onto the shoulders. Now, a lot of people don't really push that high. They just kind of push a little bit like that. But really, we're trying to go for the optimum movement of getting ourselves up onto our shoulders. And what that is doing is, is one of these miracles of BJJ. It's creating movement using your torso. So that just that's, that seems really simple. But it's one of those sports that adds a, a different dynamic. You can push, you can pull, you can push, you can pull. You can do that with your limbs. But in essence, you've created a fifth limb by learning to master the ability of just putting those feet up, shooting those hips out, getting up on those shoulders, and getting that movement nice and high. So that's really the sort of first uh, thing that we're going to talk about. Now, the muscles that are involved to create that hip movement are every single muscle that you have. It takes the leg muscles to be primed and able to push that up. It takes your glutes, your butt, and also the muscles going out throughout the groin to get you up. And it also takes a lot of abdominal muscles to be able to get yourselves right up on those shoulders. 
That's why this movement is not for the faint-hearted. It's not for someone who's not fit. And able to use your hips properly means that you need to be able to move your body around properly as well. So, you know, this is a very, very simple movement. If you look at the mechanics of it, it's actually quite complex to get yourself to where you need to, and that is all the way up onto that shoulder. And as you can see, if the opponent is sitting in top of the mount, if I can get to this position, I'm getting that opponent pretty high off the air, fucking them forward, which then creates a whole bunch of things for me. So that's really the first kind of technique that we wanted to focus on today, that hip movement. So those are the fundamentals of how you do it. So with me, I just want you to practice 10 of those movements, nice and slow, okay? We're gonna go up, hold it for two, three, and come down 10 times. Should get a bit of an ab workout for it, and I really want you to focus on getting to your shoulders, not just spudding your back, getting right up into those shoulders. And I'll probably speak about the hands as well. Practice keeping our hands forward, that forward frame protecting our face, keeping the elbows nice and tight. Okay, so here we go. Get your feet primed, put your hands in, and we're gonna go for the first one, and up, two, three, and down. So that's the first one. And up, two, three, and down. Two, up, two, three, and down. Three, up, two, three, and down. Four, up, two, three, and down. Five, up, two, three, and down. At six, up, two, three, and down, that's seven. Up, two, three, and down, that's eight. Up, two, three, and down, that's nine. Last one, up, two, three, and down, that's 10. Okay, so that's, um, that's pretty much the first part of the, uh, the hip bump uh, that we wanted to speak about. Um, Trav, have you got any points that you want to raise or Nick or are there any questions anyone out there um, has before we go on to the next part? Good. Anything from uh, the internet world, any questions or anything like that? No? Cool. Okay, let's talk about the next part. So, um, I think I've been going enough about how important it is to move those hips, okay? Um, it's, I really truly believe it's, it's the fifth element when it comes to your jiu-jitsu. Um, I use my hips as a, as a tool um, that, that are beyond just my limbs when I'm passing guard, when I'm holding people down. Uh, it's only something I've, I've recently sort of seen other people do and I've tried to master it myself. Um, so using your hips when someone is on top of you uh, it is very much a part of my game and, and very much a part of something that you can maintain. Now that exercise that we did with that hip movement, 10 of those, I mean, I've got to sweat on just thinking about it. Uh, when you're exercising at home, a part of your movement, part of your warm up, you can do it on the carpet or anything, is just doing some of those hip movements. So let's add some more layers to it. So the hip movements, I want to turn my back to you. Um, the hip movements now also allow us to go to the side smiley. So we spoke about how we can do the hip movements straight up, but we also have the hip movements that push our body out to different angles as well. So this looks like this. Instead of going directly straight up, we're going to shoot to put the hip on, the hip goes up, but then we go onto one of the shoulders. And we use our arms, our opposite arm to reach, just to help us provide a bit of movement as well. So it looks a little something like this, going over my left, I'm going to come up, touch the ground, and then come down again. What that doing is, it's changing the dynamic of where I can move my hips and where I can move my opponent. We all know that when we're bucking to get our opponent off, we can buck them, but if we can buck them off to an angle as well, that gives us just another tool in our tool belt that we can use. So it should look a little something like, and the first thing I do automatically, walk those feet up towards my butt, I push those hips up, get on those shoulders, really focusing on pushing that hip up. Now I've got two points of contact on the ground, up the, my top half, that's my shoulder and my head, and then the third one is just my fingertips that come out, that just let me know I've reached far enough. That's over the left side, coming up again onto the right side, and then coming up again onto the left side. So that movement there um, is also another powerful part of the movement. It's adding to the trunk of just that basic movement of getting the person off you, but allowing you to now change that movement. And again, it's extremely powerful. It's using you know, your core, your hips, that, that main pivot point that your body has to buck that opponent in any way that you want. And I use this often to try to get the opponent off me, sneak in a half guard, get the opponent off me, get my hooks in. And it's really the catalyst of how I start to do all my escapes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice going up through the shoulders, which just gives us a couple more tools. Feet come in, 
We go uh, up to go straight this time, we're going to go to the left, up onto the shoulder, touch, back down, up to the right, touch, back down, up to the left, touch, back down, up to the right, touch, back down. What you just want to make sure that you do is when you're reaching for that touch, uh, you want to make sure that your hips are really pushing up. I can feel that when I'm reaching for the touch, my hips want to give a little bit and my hips want to drop down. Have the discipline to push the muscles in and to push those hips up, maintaining that discipline up as you go through. Okay, so we'll go through the next drill now, and we're just going to do 10 touches, 10 each side. Okay, we're going to go 10 on the left, uh, 10 on the right, we're going to alternate 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So this will go for a bit, uh, a bit of a time, uh, but it's just going to help us get warmed up and get used to the movement. So everyone, positions ready, feet uh, up to your bottoms, hands up. We're going to start reaching out to our left, up onto our left shoulder, reaching forward with the right hand. Here we go. Uh, one. Good. Keep those hips nice and high. One on the right. Two. Two on the right. Three. Three on the right. Four. Four on the right. I can feel my hips are getting tired now. Have the discipline, keep them pushing up. Five. Five on the right. Really focus having all your body weight on that one point in your shoulder. Six. Six on the right. Nice and high with those hips. Seven. Seven on the right. Eight. Eight on the right. Nine. Nine on the right. Last one. Ten. 10 on the right, and steady there. Okay, so there, that, that's, that's not an easy drill um, physically, that's quite hard. I can really feel that in the abdominals, I can really feel it down the sides, um, because it's muscles that, that, to be honest with you, I, I, I haven't focused on doing that movement strictly like that. It's something that you wouldn't focus on, but I think things like that, while we have the time to focus on, are the things that are gonna make our game stronger as we maintain our Jiu Jitsu, um, and we get into um, back onto the mats when we bring this sort of mind and body back together. Okay, so we have the, the back, the left, the right, traveling points. No, that's off. excellent. And TJ makes a very good point. If we are, let's say six months, I hope we're not, by the way, guys, but six months away and you haven't done anything, you're crazy. I think I'm using this opportunity to think, well, I hope my uh, future competition out there is, is taking it easy. Because yeah. I, I haven't done that exercise in a while, and I need to do more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, any points or any questions from out there before we finish up our last room? Okay, cool. All right, so um, you know, keep your questions down. Um, so what we're going to do for the last drill is really combine the two, okay? So you'll just be in position. I'll say back, left, or right, and you'll go to the back, you'll go to the left, you'll go to the right. We'll go on for a period of time. Uh, we'll call it quits there, we'll stretch out for the night, um, and then we'll call it night. Now normally we'll probably make the lessons go for a bit longer than this, but just for the first trial one tonight, um, that's pretty much going to be it. And we'll just get creative, we'll see how we go. So we're going to do the drill now, hopefully you're warmed up, hopefully you've got a bit of sweat going on. I'll go side on for this one. We'll get into the position, uh, we'll do a few of them, and then we'll call it quits. So next, remembering the fundamentals we spoke about, keeping those feet nice and close to the bottom. Keeping your knees slightly wide apart, get ready for your hips to move to the up, to the left, to the right. Your abs should be tight, uh, your shoulders are slightly off the ground, and your elbows are in, your hands are up, and this is your on your back fighting position where you go. Okay, and then I'm going to call a series now, I'm going to say either back, left, or right, and I might call a combination back, right, we do back, come back down, and then go to the right. Okay, so here we go. You see the confusion. <laughs> okay, and back, nice and simple, getting those hips nice and high. Left. Not your left hand, your left shoulder. Right. That's it. Left. Right. On your right hand. Back. Left. Back. Right. Back. Left. Back. Back. Right, left, back, right, left, 
back, left, right, right, back, left, left, right, back, and steady there. <laughs> All right. I heard Trav moaning like crazy. <laughs> it was quite good. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's it. So that's that's the movement off your back. Um, look, I, I, I promise you, if you practice those techniques, the strength that you're developing your hips to move when someone's on top of you, um, when Mike's on top of you, someone like that, it, it will be powerful. Combine that with some of the aspects that Mike talked about tonight, watching the pros and having him break it down. I think I think we're on something here. Like, Look, guys. Um, obviously, you know, uh, look, we're all adults. I get it. We both, we we stay, we go. It's it's up to each and one of us. But we're going to try and put some really interesting content on here. I thought what Mike did was excellent. What you did just then, it was really good to grab something in class. We grab a lot of concepts, but isn't it nice to just take the hips? And really give him a workout. I haven't done that since I was probably a very six months in my life belt, with working hard at it, and I've forgotten, you know. So if we can add this to our game, we'll come out of this stronger. Sure, we won't be flying and we'll lose a bit of time, but at least we'll have all these other skills. Yeah. All right. All right, let's stretch up. Stretching. So let's go left leg out in front first. Give me that nice, okay. that back. I'll go eight on block. The back, oh, I got in. <laughs> the angle, back angle, nice and straight. Reaching out as far as you can. If you can't touch the toe, that's fine. Just touch as far as that foot as you can. Main thing is don't hunch your back down. Keeping your back nice and straight, keeping that chest up. You should feel this in the hamstring. Okay, got a bit of a workout tonight with your hamstring, pushing it up and down. Uh, remember to stretch those. Uh, if you're an office worker, uh, which I certainly am, you get a lot of hamstring tightness. Swapping legs out, left foot in, right foot out. Again, keeping that back nice and straight. Reaching down as far as you can. All right, great. Another one, you can do that again. Uh, but we'll go through the next one. We'll just stretch out the uh, hips a little bit. So one knee on the ground, one foot out the front, bending forward, stretching out that groin, hip area. Definitely would have got a bit of a workout uh, with those drills tonight. That feels great. Other side. All right. Okay. Well, a couple of stretches. Do your stretches in your own time, guys. Um, but that's pretty much it. We will do a stretching session. I like stretching. Um, I think as I get older, it takes me longer to stretch. Uh, I think that's the secret, actually. I think people go, oh, you're old and you're stiff. A stiff person thinks they should stretch and it only takes the same amount of time as a young person. All my sparring classes, I stretch for an hour beforehand just so I look semi-decent. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm slower, it takes longer, but that's all right, I'm still in the game. Okay, uh, look, we're gonna finish up. Thanks, Mike, thanks, Tune. thanks for everyone who was on. There was a few uh, It got busy. We've recorded it. I'll see how we put that on Facebook and all the rest of it. I'll probably put it on Google Docs. It's probably a big file, but no idea. Uh, and we will do this again. Let's go for Wednesday night. Uh, people, be honest with your comments and everything. Uh, we've got thick skin and, you know, we're just trying to do our best. Anyway, uh, cool. any, anyone else? No, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, have I muted you all? Is it? Well, you can't talk. Uh, I don't know. Uh, just no, I'm muted myself. Muted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we probably just muted our own um, our microphone, so that way we can... Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, look, I enjoyed it. I, I like that breakdown, but that's kind of, I guess, that's what I like to do. I think it's engaging the brain. Yeah. So, guys, if I... It, maybe that's a bit, you know, around longer, but I think it's a bit All right. Yeah, so Zach, were you watching too? Little Zach? Yeah. Uh... Yep. Hey, Zach. Hey, did you train along with us? Yeah. Awesome. I saw he even had his gear on. Hey. You know, I've got to tell you this. Uh, and uh, 
I said to my kids today, you're going to school, I want you to put your uniform on. And they go no away and there's a mutiny. And they didn't get the uniform on, I, I lost out. Then I go down to the butcher shop and it's been raided. There's no meat, there's meat, mate. I'm like, I said to the butcher, are we, are we getting, is it getting bad? So he said, no, no, I'll just, just sold out today, he's got meat. And he's uh, the lady, the Robin, who runs Robin Road Chocolates, lovely chocolate place uh, out at Murray Bateman, and she's doing um, deliveries, so if you want some, excellent chocolates. But she said to me, she, she said, uh, in Sydney, they're making one of the rich, oh, whatever, schools is making them put their uniforms on because it, it shows that you're committed to that. It shows we're in uniform because obviously you don't have to be, but it, it makes you feel like you're training, you feel like you're part of something. So well done, Jackie, for putting it on. Hey. Good job. That's how we're going to I'm going to put it on each time as well so that, you know, we're, we're here to train. Let's do what we can. Mentally, you know, mindset. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I think we'll just keep gas bagging otherwise. <laughs> See you, everyone. Thank you. See you. No worries, buddy. Cheers, guys. Bye. See you. Awesome.